Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. When scripture is talking to the young it talks about two advantages that they have number one is that they are strong number two is that the word of God abiding in them has given them the ability to overcome a personality that the Bible calls the wicked one please listen when he writes to the fathers he describes that your advantage is your knowledge there is something you have known about God from the beginning when he writes to the young men he says your advantage as young people is that you have strength and then that his word abides in you and on account of that abiding word that you have the power to overcome the wicked it is very important when the Bible is, is teaching us, it's important that we focus on the context of what it is saying. Knowledge for the fathers, strength and the grace to fight is the advantage of young people. Are we together now? First John chapter 5 verse 4. Apostle John is still teaching. And he's teaching the believer that the life of a believer is not only a life of victory but a life of warfare verse 4 for whatsoever not whosoever is born of God overcome it he's still talking of overcoming listen please young men strength and the grace to fight and he's saying whatsoever is born of God overcomes this system and this is the victory that overcomes there is victory that does not overcome there is victory that calls for celebration but here he's talking about a kind of victory that demonstrates that you are victorious by the experience of your overcoming this system and he says even our faith listen very carefully he didn't say this faith produces that victory he says the faith is the victory are we together now you have to understand this this is for many years i thought he's just talking of faith you will learn something powerful tonight that there is something called the faith that overcomes that if a believer possesses that the proof is that you will be able to rise above this system and the bible calls that faith it does not say the faith produces victory uh -uh. that faith is victory itself are we together mm. ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16 it starts by saying above all above every spiritual equipping you have been given now remember that in the book of Ephesians he's teaching the believer how to sit a revelation of your position in Christ then he teaches how to walk your walk of faith now he's teaching you how to stand against something he calls the wiles of the enemy and he's saying that above all that you can take a shield a shield I did a little of that during the prayer and fasting I don't know if it was this year or last year a shield of faith and then it says wherewith with that shield you shall have an ability you don't have that ability until that shield is there that when the shield comes you will be able to quench how many all the fiery darts of the wicked the same wicked one John is talking about so we know that when it has to do with warfare, Satan is revealed as a wicked man. 
wickedness that the whole world lied in wickedness that is the character please listen and then the Bible says that you can hold the shield of faith and that with that faith you can quench all not some the fiery darts I write to you young men don't forget what we are dealing with because you are strong I write to you young men because you have an ability to fight and overcome are we together now first Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9 we we'll touch on four scriptures and then I'll begin to teach Paul is teaching here and he's saying for a great door He's teaching the church in Corinth and an effectual is opened unto me so he's talking about open doors are we together now dimensions access a great door an effectual is open unto me he said but there are many adversaries a door of opportunity a door of growth a door of grace but he's saying he's teaching us something here that the moment you see doors opening don't celebrate prepare to fight that a great door is open unto me but that the moment a door begins to be opened he's teaching you that you should not be carried away by that door that is open the moment you see doors opening know that there are many adversaries and so young men get set when you see doors open take up your shield of faith because there is the wicked one are you are you getting what i'm teaching you now yes that for every door that is opened and effectual that means you can see the presence of the evil one to validate whether it was god that opened that door and that you are prepared to fight with this shield of faith please understand i teach you a deep mystery that you will need for your spiritual life a great door and an effectual is open but many are the adversaries but the bible says you can take hold the shield of faith and you will be able to quench the fiery darts now listen it matters that we understand how we grow in the kingdom it matters listen please that we understand how we transit in the kingdom it matters that we understand how victory is wrought for the saints because for many believers we are aware of promises but we have not been mentored into the dynamics of walking into the experience of the life the power the grace of the kingdom and so while we are inspired by an expected end many times we are ignorant of the things that happen between Egypt and Canaan are you getting what I'm saying now so it is true that we fix our eyes on the end but we are never really taught to understand the many things the vicissitudes that we will face on the way and lack of listen lack of that understanding can do many things to our experience including not allowing us to arrive at the end spiritual maturity is not just the ability to be in church in fact it's not just the ability to read your bible to be equipped remember when he talks about fathers their advantage is knowledge you are fathers because you have an advantage of knowledge so when he talks about fathers he says you have knowledge there is something that you know when he talks about young men he says young men you are about to know something you do not yet know it but in your fight what you need now is the strength and the stamina to fight so that when you become fathers you will also be able to guide the young are you getting what I'm saying now fathers you have this knowledge because you fought and that experience taught you something about God that has become an advantage and a security for you young men you are your advantage is that you are emotion there is strength 
but there are many things you are going to know and then he says guard you with strength and stand in faith because a door is open towards you but there are many adversaries and you must understand the spiritual technology by which men fight until they grow to become fathers listen very carefully to what i'm about to teach you it's a very powerful mystery many believers are not trained to understand the things of the spirit and how to navigate the enemy please hear me this life is a combination of victories that appear when we fight a good fight of faith now i believe in the grace message don't get me wrong i believe in all of these dimensions of the kingdom but there is something about destiny that i want us to respect tonight that destiny is a threat to satan the very the very picture of destiny your fulfilling your destiny is the assurance that satan's doom is imminent and so when satan sees a man and a people with a destiny they become the center of his interest now many believers don't know this we have all kinds of wise sayings don't trouble me i don't trouble you and all of that and we have sometimes this false indoctrination that the only way you give satan the only way satan comes to you is when you look for his trouble you are joking go and read your bible well the, there is something the moment you carry that thing calls satan till you leave the earth please understand what i'm teaching you when there is prophecy upon your head when there is grace upon your life when there is a word upon your mouth when there is an interest upon your life satan is interested in you and let me tell you there is one thing about satan he has an undying interest he wants everything god wants and if that thing is you then listen to this message koinonia is quiet <laughs> The proposition that many believers have that you just know God, love God, worship God, engage principles here and there, you know, just speak the word here and there, and just cut walk into a glorious destiny is a joke. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's a joke. If it is destiny in Christ, if it's a life of victory, then please understand what I tell you that there is faith that overcomes follow me as i teach i have discovered that satan's assignment listen carefully satan's assignment is never to fight your faith i used to think satan was after our faith i found out that's wrong satan is not after your faith Satan is after the information upon which your faith was built. Now, please understand what I'm teaching you. Satan is not interested in your faith. Satan is interested in information, words. Because that is the basis upon which faith is built. Please understand this. <clears throat> There is no basis for faith until it is built on a word or the word as the case may be. Are we together? If I tell Pastor Alpha or Pastor Femi or Kenny or anybody, I say, come. I have called them. I have sent a word. They can place their faith upon it now. You see that? So what you really attack is not their obedience what you attack is the information if i tell pastor alpha come pastor femi come 
and they hear another voice that says go now that is an attack on information because in either ways it is going to necessitate action please listen to what i'm teaching you many believers get to a point in their christian experience where they have access to spiritual information that many times begins to corrupt the pace of their work with God. There are many believers who the challenge in their life is information dependent. Satan just comes in to plant another information. Please hear what I teach you. We're going to go to Genesis and you see what happened to Adam and Eve. I, I thought Satan was after faith, action. No, he's after information. Hezekiah heard just one information from a prophet and Hezekiah's whole life went down. If prophet Isaiah never reached Hezekiah, he probably would be able to, maybe he would have died still. But just that information, one information. The apostles of the Lamb were walking with Jesus and they had one information. I'm about to die. I'm going and I'm leaving you. And that changed everything. Jesus, where are you going? A dead body had one information and came back to life. Wine was finished. One information was introduced. And the next thing, water was turned to wine. Listen to me. This is a kingdom where we reign. And this is a kingdom. Koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. together everywhere I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne I will worship Him and give a prayer to Him alone He who was and is to come sing before the sun Just hold hands with 
someone by your left and right. Just bless him in the spirit. For your love, for your grace, for your mercy, for your goodness, for your faithfulness. Is someone giving him worship? You are able to do without us. Yet you act like you can. Mighty God, we bless you. We worship you, O God of heaven, the maker of the ends of the earth. Thank you for the privilege of worship. Thank you because you are God. It is not like you. Please let worship come from your heart, from the depth of your heart, even on to the King. Bless him in the spirit. Bless him in your understanding. Let your attention be on Jesus tonight. Right, Just a few minutes of connecting deeply and truly with the God of the heavens. You are God. There is truly none like you. From everlasting, even to everlasting. We declare that you remain God, majesty. Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. For making us who we are, for making us what we are, thank you. For Koinonia, for your grace, for your mercy, for your goodness. Harush Halabarubiata, for the privilege of fellowship with the Spirit, for the privilege of fellowship with the brethren, for the privilege of fellowship with the world. We thank you. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, let your word come like rain upon a thirsty ground. Please lift your voice and... Such the sweet atmosphere of the Spirit in this place tonight. Let your word come like rain. Until the Spirit be poured up from on high, then it says... The wilderness will be counted for a fruitful day. Then a fruitful ground for a forest. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we have come as proof that we love you. We have come tonight as proof that we want to learn, we want to grow, we want to rise to heights and dimensions unimagined. We have come tonight as proof that we are still interested in your dealings over our lives. We have come tonight 
as proof that we know the one who can change us, who can lift us, who can heal, who can deliver. We have come tonight as proof that we are grateful people, recipients of your mercy and grace. We have come tonight because we are hungry to receive the hallowed bread of the Spirit. We have come tonight because our hearts are thirsty. We have searched around and found out that you are the living bread and you are the water of life. Tonight I pray in the name of Jesus. Let there be the hearing of faith. Let there be the working of miracles. May your word come, O oh God, like fire from heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated, everyone. Hallelujah. It's my joy again to be around with us. Um, We're still going to pray tonight, and I trust that God will help us. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. I begin my reading from verse 12. Let me start um, to just encourage our hearts. First John chapter 2. Verse 12, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. 13, I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, now listen, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. 14. I have written to you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Grant us understanding even by the Spirit. Build our hearts, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. When scripture is talking to the young, it talks about two advantages that they have. Number one is that they are strong. Number two is that the word of God abiding in them has given them the ability to overcome a personality that the Bible calls the wicked one. Please listen. When he writes to the fathers, he describes that your advantage is your knowledge. There is something you have known about God from the beginning. When he writes to the young men, he says your advantage as young people is that you have strength and then that his word abides in you and on account of that abiding word that you have the power to overcome the wicked it is very important when the bible is is teaching us it's important that we focus on the context of what it is saying knowledge for the fathers strength and the grace to fight is the advantage of young people are we together now first john chapter 5 verse 4 apostle john is still teaching and he's teaching the believer that the life of a believer is not only a life of victory but a life of warfare verse 4 for whatsoever not whosoever is born of god overcome it he's still talking of overcoming listen please young men strength and the grace to fight and he's saying whatsoever is born of god overcomes this system and this is the victory that overcomes there is victory that does not overcome there is victory 
that calls for celebration. But here he's talking about a kind of victory that demonstrates that you are victorious by the experience of your overcoming this system. And he says, even our faith. Listen very carefully. He didn't say this faith produces that victory. He says the faith is the victory. Are we together now? You have to understand this. This is, for many years, I thought he's just talking of faith. You will learn something powerful tonight. That there is something called the faith that overcomes. That if a believer possesses that, the proof is that you will be able to rise above this system. And the Bible calls that faith. It does not say the faith produces victory. Uh -uh. That faith is victory itself. Are we together? Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16. It starts by saying above all, above every spiritual equipping you have been given. Now remember that in the book of Ephesians, he's teaching the believer how to sit, a revelation of your position in Christ. Then he teaches how to walk, your walk of faith. Now he's teaching you how to stand against something he calls the wiles of the enemy. And he's saying that above all, that you can take a shield, a shield, I did a little of that during the prayer and fasting. I don't know if it was this year or last year. A shield of faith. And then it says, wherewith, with that shield, you shall have an ability. You don't have that ability until that shield is there. That when the shield comes, you will be able to quench how many? All the fiery darts of the wicked. The same wicked one John is talking about. So we know that when it has to do with warfare, Satan is revealed as a wicked man. Wickedness, that the whole world lied in wickedness. That is the character. Please listen. And then the Bible says that you can hold the shield of faith. And that with that faith you can quench all, not some, the fiery darts. I write to you young men. Don't forget what we are dealing with because you are strong. I write to you young men because you have an ability to fight and overcome. Are we together now? First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. We'll touch on four scriptures and then I'll begin to teach. Paul is teaching here and he's saying for a great door he's teaching the church in Corinth and an effectual is opened unto me so he's talking about open doors are we together now dimensions access a great door an effectual is open unto me he said but there are many adversaries a door of opportunity a door of growth a door of grace but he's saying he's teaching us something here that the moment you see doors opening don't celebrate prepare to fight that a great door is open unto me but that the moment a door begins to be opened he's teaching you that you should not be carried away by that door that is open the moment you see doors opening know that there are many adversaries and so young men get set when you see doors open take up your shield of faith because there is the wicked one are you are you getting what i'm teaching you now yes that for every door that is opened and effectual that means you can see the presence of the evil one to validate whether it was God that opened that door. And that you are prepared to fight with this shield of faith. Please understand, I teach you a deep mystery that you will need for your spiritual life. A great door and an effectual is open. But many are the adversaries. But the Bible says you can take hold the shield of faith. And you will be able to quench the fiery darts. Now, listen. 
it matters that we understand how we grow in the kingdom it matters listen please that we understand how we transit in the kingdom it matters that we understand how victory is wrought for the saints because for many believers we are aware of promises but we have not been mentored into the dynamics of walking into the experience of the life the power the grace of the kingdom and so while we are inspired by an expected end many times we are ignorant of the things that happen between Egypt and Canaan are you getting what I'm saying now so it is true that we fix our eyes on the end but we are never really taught to understand the many things the vicissitudes that we will face on the way and lack of listen lack of that understanding and do many things to our experience including not allowing us to arrive at the end spiritual maturity is not just the ability to be in church in fact it's not just the ability to read your Bible to be equipped remember when he talks about fathers their advantage is knowledge you are fathers because you have an advantage of knowledge so when he talks about fathers he says you have knowledge there is something that you know when he talks about young men he says young men you are about to know something you do not yet know it but in your fight what you need now is the strength and the stamina to fight so that when you become fathers you will also be able to guide the young are you getting what I'm saying now fathers you have this knowledge because you fought and that experience taught you something about God that has become an advantage and a security for you young men you are your advantage is that you are emotion there is strength but there are many things you are going to know and then he says guard you with strength and stand in faith because a door is open towards you but there are many adversaries and you must understand the spiritual technology by which men fight until they grow to become fathers listen very carefully to what I'm about to teach you it's a very powerful mystery many believers are not trained to understand the things of the spirit and how to navigate the enemy please hear me this life is a combination of victories that appear when we fight a good fight of faith now I believe in the grace message don't get me wrong I believe in all of these dimensions of the kingdom but there is something about destiny that I want us to respect tonight that destiny is a threat to Satan the very the very picture of destiny your fulfilling your destiny is the assurance that Satan's doom is imminent and so when Satan sees a man and a people with a destiny they become the center of his interest now many believers don't know this we have all kinds of wise sayings don't trouble me I don't trouble you and all of that and we have sometimes this false indoctrination that the only way you give Satan the only way Satan comes to you is when you look for his trouble you are joking go and read your Bible well the, there is something the moment you carry that thing calls Satan till you leave the earth please understand what I'm teaching you when there is prophecy upon your head when there is grace upon your life when there is a word upon your mouth when there is an interest upon your life Satan is interested in you and let me tell you there is one thing about Satan he has an undying interest he wants everything God wants 
And if that thing is you, then listen to this message. Koinonia is quiet. <laughs> The proposition that many believers have, that you just know God, love God, worship God, engage principles here and there, you know, just speak the word here and there, and just cut walk into a glorious destiny is a joke. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's a joke. If it is destiny in Christ, if it's a life of victory, then please understand what I tell you that there is faith that overcomes. Follow me as I teach. I have discovered that Satan's assignment, listen carefully, Satan's assignment is never to fight your faith. I used to think Satan was after our faith. I found out that's wrong. Satan is not after your faith. Satan is after the information upon which your faith was built. Now, please understand what I'm teaching you. Satan is not interested in your faith. Satan is interested in information, words. Because that is the basis upon which faith is built. Please understand this. <clears throat> There is no basis for faith until it is built on a word or the word as the case may be. Are we together? If I tell Pastor Alpha or Pastor Femi or Kenny or anybody, I say, come. I have called them. I have sent a word. They can place their faith upon it now. You see that? So... What you really attack is not their obedience. What you attack is the information. If I tell Pastor Alpha, come, Pastor Femi, come, and they hear another voice that says, go. Now, that is an attack on information because in either ways, it is going to necessitate action. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. Many believers get to a point in their Christian experience where they have access to spiritual information that many times begins to corrupt the pace of their work with God. There are many believers who the challenge in their life is information dependent. Satan just comes in to plant another information. Please hear what I teach you. We're going to go to Genesis and you see what happened to Adam and Eve. I, I thought Satan was after faith, action. No, he's after information. Hezekiah heard just one information from a prophet and Hezekiah's whole life went down. If prophet Isaiah never reached Hezekiah, he probably would be able to, maybe he would have died still. But just that information, one information. The apostles of the Lamb were walking with Jesus and they had one information, I'm about to die, I'm going and I'm leaving you. And that changed everything. Jesus, where are you going? A dead body had one information and came back to life. Wine was finished. One information was introduced. And the next thing, water was turned to wine. Listen to me. This is a kingdom where we reign. And this is a kingdom where Satan operates. And this is also a kingdom where God operates by the power of spiritual information. In fact, information generally. Whether spiritual, whether intellectual, whether psychological. Our fight, therefore, in this kingdom is not necessarily a fight against spirits alone. It's not necessarily a fight against antichrist systems alone. The greatest warfare of a believer 
listen to me, will be the warfare of words, the warfare of information. One information comes into your life or a series of information and it turns an ordinary student to become a doctor, to become an engineer, to become whatever it is, information. One information in a business seminar suddenly turns someone who has no hope of prospering. He receives that information and that information turns his life around. Have you been taught that in this kingdom, the maker and the breaker of men is information? There is what we call IT today. It's called information technology. Information is so powerful that technology was built around it. People have become multi-millionaires because they have mastered the art of disseminating information. They have created platforms around the world that connect people and supply information and they have prospered through it. Information is so powerful that when God is about to come and give Daniel an information, he doesn't just speak from heaven, he sends an angel with it to come. That's how much he places value on information. When Mary is about to receive Jesus, Jesus coming to her like that, she would not receive him. An angel had to come. Before the journey of Jesus started, she supplied an information. And Mary said, be it unto me. Hmm. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord has made. Verse 2. And he said, notice now, we call this the fall of man theologically speaking of, you know, Adam and Eve now falling from that height and being banished out of the Eden of God. And remember, the entire story started with words. Satan comes to the woman, to the serpent, and says, What did God say? Please go back to verse 1. I want to find out. All I am after is what information are you standing upon? Because the information is creating an effect in this garden. And that effect is creating is not giving me allowance. So for me to thwart the purposes of God, I want to find out. So I'm on a research. What did God tell you? And the woman said, well, verse 2. God said we may eat. So God gave us access to the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But of the fruit, aha, uh -huh, Satan's attention is coming now. He says, this and that and that, you shall not eat, neither shall you touch it. And then he said, what is the consequence? That if you touch it, you shall die. So an information tied to life and an information tied to death. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then Satan does not say, man, leave the garden. Satan does not say, man, I command you to die. In fact, Satan does not say, man, stop having faith. He says, man, give me your attention. Next verse. The serpent said, ye shall not die. Do you know what he's doing? He did not touch their faith. He's redirecting where the faith is based upon now. They still need faith to believe this. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And the only thing he came was to withdraw nicely the information upon which their victory in the garden was predicated upon. And he shifted it and supplied another information. And they absorbed that information. Verse 5. It says, for God knows. For God knows. 
I write to you fathers, any father including God, that the advantage in fatherhood is knowledge. For God knows that the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be opened. And then you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. Now, he said, when the woman saw, notice what the information started doing. The information was like a drug. We are not aware that he touched her. He just supplied an information. The first thing the information changed was perception. The eyes. The eyes started coming under the influence of that information. And then number two, an appetite started coming out that was not there. Now, look at how words are powerful. You will now know why God is called the word of God. The compendium of the thoughts of God. This is how Satan sent man out of Eden. Is it not amazing that he never used a sword? My brothers and my sisters, the greatest battles are not fought with knives. The greatest battles are not fought with blood and arrows and guns. The greatest battles is the energizings that information does to people. And the Bible says here that when she saw that it was pleasant and good for food, the Bible says she partook of it. Et, that information compelled action. He never touched her, but he made something that had entered her spirit and her mind to compel action. And then the Bible says that she gave unto her husband who was there and he did eat. Next verse. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sued fig trees. The long and short is he banished them out of the garden. This is the first official record in the Bible of man becoming a victim of Satan. This is the first official record of the warfare between man and Satan and Satan won. So it means that we have to go back and study what weapon he used. And he used the weapon of words. Weapons of information. Are we together now? Yes. There is another way of doing ministry that can produce great results. That information comes. I can put something in your pocket and suddenly the power of God will multiply. You were moving in innocence, but an information came. I will tell you something about informations. I just needed to know that the real warfare of a believer is a battle of information. Satan wants your mind because your, your destiny is not just God dependent. It's also dependent on the information that runs you. Your faith cannot be based on nothing. And whatever something it is that is the pillar of your confidence, of your results, that's what Satan wants. Please listen to me. The information upon which your faith is built, that is his concern. Satan is not interested in your faith as it were. He's interested because faith is simply conviction on an information and the corresponding action you take to demonstrate that you are convicted. That's it. So if I tell Tosin, I say, Tosin, go and collect that handkerchief from this gentleman. Now faith can come because I have released a word. Is that true? Yes. That word will stop him from doing what he was doing before and compel him now to act. So when you see him move, you call it faith. But faith would never have been there except that an information came. Now, assuming he's on his way going and I now stop him and give him another word, I say, don't worry, go back. What did I do? I turned his whole life around using information. Listen to what I teach you. There is power in this. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door.
information is power both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm I want to show you why words are so powerful God protects it with his name and calls himself the Word of God God does not call himself um, the hand of God as it were he names himself after information if God names himself after information that information created the heavens and the earth. Something was said and suddenly made bones that were hiding to come out. Something was said that made bones that were dead to come back to life. Something was said that made fishermen to not be interested in fishing again. I can stop whatever you are doing now, not by fighting you. I only need to introduce something to you. I can move your life by information. I can stop your life by information. I can help you to be anointed by information. And I can destroy you by information. No wonder the founders of some of the great conglomerates around the world today, their product, the advantage is the vast access they have to information. Google, Facebook, they are a threat today to national security and the simple advantage is because they develop a psychological platform that compel the world to grant them access to information to the point that the US government has to call them. There are several cult groups today and everything that is discussed in those cult groups are privy information. Are we together now? Let me share with you the technology of words. I want to show you, that's not the topic for tonight. I want to show you why words are powerful. I want to show you why information is powerful. So that you will understand that every time a word goes before you, it's not just a time to jump. It's a time to begin to prepare. Because Satan is coming after that information. This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare. I've sent you with our information. I've done my best. Timothy, hold that information and fight until you win. Let me tell you why words are powerful. Second Kings. I mean, not Second Kings. Ezekiel chapter 2. I sense a strong anointing in this place. Look up, please. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up on thy feet, and I will speak unto you. Verse 2. And the Spirit entered me. Wow. When he spake unto me, and that Spirit, the words just stop at my ear, and the Spirit continued. The spirit started making my body to start acting in consonance with what was said. Now listen please. That he wanted me to move from where I was to another place. And he simply sent a word. And when that word got to the gate of my ears, it was not, it, it had finished his work like a train. Every other thing that entered me was no longer sound, it was spirit. And that when it entered me, like a drug reacting to a patient, have you swallowed a drug before? And then you stand and the contraindications begin to work on you. You start to feel drowsy and you are wondering. Remember, you didn't ask the drug whether you wanted to be drowsy or not. It entered you and started reconfiguring you. I know your action by what you have received. I look at your destiny and I can I can trace your victory or your problem to the presence of information. 
Marushi da sibra haski da bala. Kila subra ske de balatu siata. What did God tell you? Your victory cannot be automatic. So, if what did God tell you in your conversation with Him? Because in Genesis, when you read Genesis chapter 2, it says, Now the Lord came. The Hebrew word is the talking spirit, the spirit that speaks, the spirit that lives by speaking, the spirit that changes a man's life by speaking. Now, listen. So for every word that is spoken, there is a spirit. The word spirit there does not just mean the Holy Spirit. It means there is an energizing. Words and information carry energy. They create a climate that compel action. This is where religion and science both agree. That words are powerful. They are shapers of perception. They are initiators of action words I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you your strength is based on something you have heard and your victory is predicated upon a, a spiritual information supply there is a medical condition called brain damage there is also another medical condition called loss of memory. It happens a lot with old people. It's a state where because of whatever biological challenges, you no longer have the retention power. You can forget your wife, your husband. And medical people agree that it's a dangerous state for a man to be in. There are people, watch this. Who all of a sudden, especially the elderly, after 60, 70 years of living on earth, it could even be a pilot, it could even be a professor, just two months, something affects the bank of information and the man can no longer walk. His bones were not affected. The information was withdrawn and he stands up and can no longer move. And you ask him and say, what is your name, sir? And he talks like a toddler. The absence of information turn a man to a baby. The technology of words. Words carry presence. Information carries energy. Whether they are spiritual information, whether they are psychological information, whether they are they are um, intellectual information that every time your the gate of your ears and your eye is open to information there is more that happens to you than awareness and enlightenment ladies and gentlemen now I want you to pay attention because I'm showing you a secret that is destroying our generation I show you the reason why men never stay until they win I show you a reason why very few people are victorious in this life do you know why because one of the worst things that happened to us on earth is a system that allowed information to go uncoordinated is one of the worst discoveries it is an advantage but what a, it was a galore for Satan when that happened there are still a few nations today now I'm not I'm not I'm not speaking political but there are a few nations today that still have some level from an earth realm from some level of sanity a bit and the reason why those nations have is the dictators the leaders there worked with the government to stop information dissemination is that true when you study um, stories of men like Adolf Hitler who led the campaign wanting to make Germany to speak about dominance there were chants and cliches that they continued to put it was on radio it was everywhere and all they were doing is indoctrinating the average German to believe he was superior and it worked he built an army not by recruiting men, information. 
terrorist groups today continue to recruit people not necessarily by force they propose information that can make a young man who is on his way becoming a doctor to suddenly turn and say i want to become part of a group and will be willing to die for it whoever told you information is cheap whoever told you information is simple where God names himself the word of God the information of God so every time words come to you here's the technology when a word is spoken or you come in contact with words or information the first thing that happens to you is your imagination is activated imaginations cannot be activated until there are words this is why words are dangerous words are the only instruments that have the power to activate imagery from where we get imaginations Everybody look up. Imagine a yellow orange. Yellow orange. Big yellow orange. Now imagine that someone is cutting that orange with a knife. Are you seeing how whether you like it or not, you are thinking what I'm saying. You are not just hearing it. I'm forcing your mind to move a direction by using the power of information. Now imagine a mother carrying a little baby. Imagine the baby trying to cry. Are, are you seeing how helpless your mind is? Provided the only way you can stop that imagination is to stop the information from reaching you. But once it is there, it has an ability that not even you can control again. Once it enters, it's like a drug. It starts to become an artist. It paints images about God, about life, about Satan. A little baby never believed that life can be hard till an information came. He heard the father or the mother say, Kai, this life self, this life self, and an image began to be created. And that image, listen, it is dangerous because the moment an image is built, your emotions are connected to the image. The moment your emotions are connected to images, creation begins immediately. This is how things manifest. Please, I want you to listen. You would thank me for what you are learning today. When the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, it knows what it's saying. That means control the information that enters into your spirit man because out of it, that information is not just words. That information is not just speakings. That information is a potential for creation that can make or mar you. What Elijah is playing now is not just music. What he's playing now, they are words. They are spiritual information operating at different frequencies and because your tripartite nature was designed to understand this your ears may not know what he's saying but your spirit man knows that is the reason why they can use music to calm people down that is why when music was played a demon left Saul the demon had something that Saul did not hear the ear of Saul was not necessary. Just allow the string enter. When it gets to the realm of the spirit, it will change back to words and the spirit will know what is being said. Listen to me. Nations today have gone to war simply because of information. Whole territories have been annihilated because of information. There are people today in hellfire because of information. Who has believed our reports? To that man, the arm of the Lord has been made revealed.
Words carry spirits. Words carry energy. And this is not some science nonsense. I am telling you, you literally can program your climate in less than a minute by the entrance. He said the entrance of your word give it light and understanding. That means show a confused man scattered in destiny. Just introduce the word of God to that person. And that's it. Your life will begin to reflect the information that you have. I'm saying this because, listen to me, our generation is very careless over our minds. Our generation is very careless over the power of words. In ministry, in life, people don't seem to have regard for words. Words are powerful. Words produce effects. Words can make. Words can destroy. Words can heal. Words can cause pain. Words are powerful. And if you understand this, words create imaginations and they connect us to those imaginations. When Satan wants a cause to remain in your family, he does not say cause remain. He uses words, the word of a priest, the word of an elder, words that have come from father to grandfather. Now you believe those words and when you believe those words, they create images. You are emotionally connected to those images and you are loyal to what you believe. That is the strength of the altar. The altar sits on your emotional connection to those words. The day you stop believing those words, you are ready for the power of God to smash that thing. That's why when the Holy Ghost comes, he now tells you, are you not aware that there is another information? Esther, listen, her man came and requested the king to approve an information. And an information was stamped already and the death sentence of the people were waiting. They were going about every day. They did not know that they had finished killing them by information. Even when her man died, they were still in trouble because the real enemy was not her man. The real enemy was the information. Esther knew that the death of her man had not yet solved that problem. Information. And so Esther went to the king and said, do you know what? You have to write another information that can give an upper hand to preserve my people. It was at that Esther chapter 6 that the story ends with honor and glory. Information. Words. That's what they call April Fool. Many of you do it. People have collapsed because of April Fool. Others have died and no opportunity to tell them I'm joking again. Now watch this. You go to an ATM to withdraw money. Remember the ATM does not speak English. You are just using your eyes. Withdraw for me 5,000 and the ATM says cash unavailable. Immediately that report depresses you, you stand there. A machine did not flog you. A machine did not speak your language. It only created an energy. Remember, you are smiling. The joy of the Lord is my strength, bouncing to the ATM. And suddenly, because you punch and it said cash unavailable, you start thinking, this is how my life is. It did not ask you to think that way. While you are laughing, take seriously what I'm saying. Satan waits until the information has been connected to your imagery. Then he comes. He will create a system around it. Sit upon it and your doom becomes almost imminent. This is the victory that overcomes. What victory? The labor in the spirit to protect the information. It is real warfare and it produces real victory. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are, there are many of us here that are parents. Why do we prefer, now please, I, I, this is respectful with all my heart, but why will a parent prefer to carry a child to a mission school than an ordinary public school? It may not necessarily just be the standard, 
the parent wants to keep the child within a sociological sphere that regulates the quality of the information that is in the mind of the child and to do that because it's not cheap you will pay for it that's the reason why a school where there can be people there's no gate in and out anybody can lean on this class and suggest you can pay next to nothing but there are people who pay millions per term on a child and you are wondering it is not only the knowledge they are paying for they are paying for the atmosphere are we together now when you go to transcorp or you go to any of these modern day hotels you buy a cup of coffee and you can pay five thousand stroll 30 meters 10 meters from that place you will get the same coffee hello the same hot water the same everything for less than 500 naira so what did you really pay for because your access to that place can give you an information you can be seated in a lounge when two millionaire businessmen are discussing and you will hear something that can be an advantage you can be there when politicians are talking so you are not only paying for tea you are paying for the energy that you are receiving there Why does Satan fight your coming to Koinonia? Did you hear the wonderful testimony of that, my dear brother? Why does Satan fight tooth and nail? He knows that it is not only the speakings of a man. That more than what you are hearing, there is a spirit. Please hear what I'm saying. Somebody testified that he got an alert. What did the alert do to him? Notice he had not verified whether the alert would be reversed. As soon as he saw it, he just started becoming glad. Watch this. A student stands in front of the board. He's coming with his friend to check his result. Glory be to God. I'm happy. We'll all be graduates. And he stands in front of the board. And in two minutes, he sees an information. Three carryovers. And that person is there. And for the next one week, he cannot become himself again because an information came imagine that while he's standing there somebody just comes and says sorry it's a mistake it was not your number watch this. immediately he will change back now watch this look at how you are moving at the frequency of information like people who check admission list and don't see their names and they go back depressed and then they see a text congratulations say for what say you got admission say no you are checking your first name check your son name and you quickly check and that's your name immediately you start to dance the information did not tell you to dance it created an energy that supplied action are you getting what i'm saying now that means if words create imaginations that connect us emotionally to it, then we must guard the words and the information that comes to us. Another thing with words is that they compel us to think and act in honor of the persuasions obtained. To think and act in honor of the persuasions. You receive an information that your loved one has gone to be with the Lord. That information does something to you. That's why you cry. That information does something to you. That's why you are gloomy and agitated. That information does something to you. The same way you receive an information, somebody just blessed you with a house. That information does something to you. Now listen to me. Listen to me. When you become a master at creating your own spiritual emotional and sociological climate you have become a master indeed do you know why i'm saying that because for every open door you read there are many adversaries and guess how the adversaries act they operate through words through words you will be promoted to a company as soon as you get there you'll be happy until you hear that there is tribalism in this company the moment you hear it it begins to affect you 
a believer has the responsibility please hear me in honor of your destiny in honor of the purposes of God you have a responsibility under God to set a guard not just over your mouth but over your mind to control the information unfortunately our world today is full of all kinds of information people have entered divination not knowing because in a bid to search for truth they stumble across Greek and Hebrew words who went to Latin words who went to ancient words who went to magical chants and before you know it they found themselves in all kinds of things I learned this about my life and I learned this from uncommon mentors and when I learned this it I made it a personal responsibility that my life I was going to guard with jealousy because the information that you are connected to ignites creation and sooner or later you will begin to see those information notice I am a doctor this is a patient he's feeling a little bit of pain in his side and then he comes to me and I run a test and I tell him sir you have cancer and based on this cancer I'm not saying doctors are wrong it is at stage four and usually statistics we built a statistics around this information that at this stage of cancer you have between six months to one year to live any other encouragement you give that man is a waste of time the information has entered let me tell you what will begin to happen my child is only nine years what am I going to do with my nine-year-old child and then the spirit of fear rides upon that information and comes I hope you know that there are cases that don't reach nine months fear is coming the next thing the spirit of suicide comes what good is living while all of this is happening watch this those possibilities will now be making all of these foundational things look strong and powerful as though they veto you and walk they depend on your partnership your reception of words now watch this he said young men the word of God abides in you that means when that kind of report comes there should be if you are a believer there should be war within your spirit if there is no war it's a sign that you are not holding the shield of faith and you are not an overcomer because it is expected that it should enter and meet another information and listen when the word went to hell there was war in hell are we together now Satan mimicking attempting to be the light bearer the word and then the word himself the logos of God there was war in hell and he triumphed over them and came out as the firstborn of the gotten the war happened in the realm of the spirit but the result was seen in the physical realm the war always happens in the realm of the spirit the death happens in the realm of the spirit the defeat happens in the realm of the spirit and all we see is the physical manifestation Satan and Jesus did not come to the earth and then they came out and said wow now we no 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 the battle was won there the keys were collected and he came out victorious and said all hail all power immediately he resurrected he spoke straight up there is something you need disciples come together in three days you had something that changed your mind little children come feed my lamb tarry in Jerusalem the Holy Ghost is coming information that's what he left them with when the angels came they said why look up you know to the sky this same Jesus you have seen he will return that became the basis of salvation the death the burial the resurrection of Christ Paul created a theology out of that information that is where we stand today he calls it the power of God unto salvation please listen to what I tell you our children watch cartoons and people get initiated why because of information notice that when these children here they start chanting what they are saying even if it's part of what they are saying whether or not they understand it and they become emotionally connected to it and it begins to affect them 
I write to you young men because you are strong fathers you know this you are equipped in knowledge but I write to you young men because you are strong I write to you young men because the word of God is abiding in you and because of that abiding word Satan is going to come and when he comes fight what fight the fight of allowing the word of God gain superiority he said let God be true and let every man be a liar this is the warfare of the believer I got a report from home in the name of Jesus let the word of God well up within me I decree and declare there is no death in my family there is no going down there is only rising up the hand of God is upon me you are fighting the warfare you are using that faith that the Bible calls is the victory I give you a guarantee there is one thing Satan does not have an indefinite power to survive it is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber Satan can be weary But there are many weak believers we sit down and allow the devil shred our lives into pieces we sit down and allow the devil to take advantage do you know there are people right now who are like if you can imagine in the realm of the spirit imagine chains that are a result of several presents that came because of words you will fail you will die your life will not rise you are good for nothing and you sit down and it leads to depression The birth of anything valuable is painful. It will require you knowing how to fight Satan. I'm saying this because this thing is killing people all over the earth. Internet. People go online and type something. Go online and just put something. Bam, and they hear an information that depresses their life forever. Oh, the job you did with that class there is a statistics like this that out of the so 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 million of graduates only three in ten years see let me tell you the truth and I submit to you many information on this earth are useless as far as your life is concerned as far as your victory is concerned you have an assignment to lean and help the spirit of truth to guide you into the truth that are necessary for your life if you expose yourself to just any and every kind of information you will lose the anointing you will lose relevance you will lose power your strength is in your protecting that information you must guard yourself is God speaking to us this gentleman sings I can tell him one word your song is beautiful it will take you around the earth he can carry that information and be working with it until he meets a manager and the manager looks at him and says what tribe are you you are not this tribe mr. man I don't want to lie to you I'm sorry another information creates presence listen we are going to pray tonight and many of you do not know that you are in them you are in the midst of different demonic energies that have come from words and because you are connected to these various things they make good things look evil it is this energy that will make good people look like devils even if somebody looks at you and say nice hair you say nice hair for what you are reacting to an energy there are information that has come to you that nothing good will come out of your life so it corrupts your perception when God says I want to lift you like Mephibosheth you say am I a dog God go and lift others tonight we have come to tear these things is why people don't prosper let me tell you it doesn't matter what kind of business you do the real business is the business of information is the reason why no great businessman will teach anything valuable everywhere they will call you and culture you and make sure you are ready to receive what they are telling you 
there was something Peter, James, and John saw and knew that the rest did not know. That was why they became the pillars. There are things God has shown me in my life about himself. There are things God has revealed to me. They become the objects of my protection because they are the pillars of my success. And if anything happens to them, then it will shred my life into pieces and I will continue to labor to protect them. Let me tell you this, your atmosphere is waiting for you to stand in faith and tear down that atmosphere. Otherwise, I don't care what kind of deliverance you do. You will get up and fall down. Your life will never change that atmosphere. I can stand in front of this guy and pick the signals of depression. I can stand in, not word of knowledge, I can pick the signals of discouragement. Why? Because I am also a spirit being and this guy has been programmed by an atmosphere. Let me tell you this, human beings are simply walking atmospheres, carrying their possibilities around. And you have an assignment under God to fight this warfare of preserving your atmosphere, the insistence. It's called the faith that brings victory. You must be careful what you say to yourself. You must be careful what you say to others. You must be careful what you hear from yourself. You must be careful what you hear about others. It is not the information, it is the effect on your life, on your destiny. It is the effect. Um, a few days ago, I, I was watching an interview between some of the billionaires in the world, and I was shocked at the, they are so cultured. Words are expensive to them. You see the way they speak. And then I was watching CNN. I don't know when was it. I was just watching uh, a, a, an impeachment probe that, that is going on and so on and so on. And I mean, you, you could see the way those guys were meticulously words. Just one word, not said correctly, can be the... And I said, ah, God, grant me the grace to master words. If my destiny is word dependent, then do something to my life. This is more than the ability to speak English. This is the ability to make sure that your communications are cultured, seasoned with salt. Number two, to ensure that you have an atmosphere that is a shield. That faith, immune by the word of God. When death comes, it finds an information. When discouragement comes, it finds an information. You are enveloped in it. Just like that. The shield. Please hear me. The days that are coming will require this understanding. The days that are coming, you will need to be the prophet of your own destiny. The days that are coming, you will need to set a guard over your mind. Your prosperity depends on it. Your lifting depends on it. Those of us in ministry, listen twice. Let me tell you, the days that are coming, you must master the art of ensuring that your spiritual climate, that your intellectual climate, that your emotional climate is seasoned with the word of God. It's an assignment you must do because a lot depends on it. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll find a place to pray. Second Kings chapter 7. Please pray in the spirit in one minute. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Hallelujah. Please look up. Watch this. Then Elisha said, this is the prophet, hear ye the word. He, he wants to change farming now. I want to show you the technology. Until now, 
Samaria is under siege to the point that women are eating their children. Do you think those women started eating their children like that? Somebody must have said something that made women to see their children as food because children are not food. Tomorrow about this time, information, everybody say words. Shall a measure of flying flour be, be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria? Next verse, verse 2. And then this other Lord said a lot of things. Simply because he did not fight the prophet. He fought the information that came from God. And there was a consequence. He said, behold, thou shalt see it with your eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Next verse. Now, watch how God brings his word to pass. Look up, please. We're about to pray. There were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said, the spirit of prophecy made them to start saying to one another, are you seeing how this thing works? Arushala Kusiata. They were not talking to themselves before, but an anointing came. As soon as that anointing came, information started coming. Why they said to one another, why sit we here till we die? Was that the first time they were sitting there? They had been there, but see, every word is sponsored by spirits. Listen to what I tell you. When they were prophesying, I hope you know these four lepers did not hear it. They did not hear the prophecy, but the spirit that went with that prophecy started searching for men. And they were sitting, they didn't even know a spirit had come upon them. The next thing, the urge to talk. And they said, why should we sit here and die? And as soon as they started contemplating, go back, go to verse 4. If we say we will enter the city, then famine is in this city and we shall die there and if we sit here we will die also please talk to me what has this got to do with four lepers sitting down it is not about leprosy it is creation about to happen but creation cannot happen until spiritual information come even for lepers even if you cannot walk you can hear it says now therefore come they are talking to one another. Let us fall onto the host of the Syrians. If we save us alive, we shall die. If they kill us, we shall but die. Look at this. These are people sitting at the gate, running away from hunger. And in minutes, courage comes upon them. And they make up their mind, let's just go and give ourselves to our enemy. If we die, information. Now watch this. Verse 5. And they rose up, what time? At twilight. To go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. What happened? Next verse. Hallelujah. Mako Sibra Katushiata. For the Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise. He did something to their perception. They got an information. I'm showing you how they ran away. They got an information and then even a great noise. And they said, the same way the lepers said to one another, this guy said to one another, Lo, the king of Israel had hired against us. Are you seeing what perception does? It gives you ideas that are not there. They, there was no business. The kings themselves were afraid. But here is an information making a weak man look strong. The king had hired against us the kings of the Hittites, the Egyptians, and so on and so forth to come upon us. Wherefore, they arose and fled also in the twilight and left their tents, their horses, their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. Eight. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink. And they carried silver, gold, raiment, and went and hid it, and came again, 
and entered into another tent and carried all of this verse 9 to tell you it was the spirit of God they now said the same spirit now made them to pass another information it would have stopped at them stealing to run away but the goal would not be achieved the goal was the salvation of Samaria not the healing of four lepers so the spirit now came and still made them to say to one another again we do not well same spirit can you imagine that one moment they are stealing and running away unhappy next moment they are convicted and say we do not do well this is the day of good tidings and we hold our peace if we tarry till morning what if some mischief come upon us now therefore come let us go to the king's house and tell him this good report that king we came and found food here four lepers were used to save a nation through the power of words i'm showing you the technology if one of those lepers just one said i'm not going the rest would have been discouraged it was the spirit of god that made all of them to unanimously agree Man of God, let me show you where the next level of your ministry is. It's not just in a man. It is in an information. There is something you can hear. There is something you have heard. There is something you are hearing that is shaping your life literally. We are products of the information that we have heard. There is something Koinonia has heard that has been the building block upon which the faith of God rests. There is something our families have heard that has authorized darkness to defeat us. Tonight in prayer is a warfare of words. To stand to say, Lord, a generation depends on the quality of not only my spiritual enlightenment but the warfare my children are depending on the quality listen let me tell you this the bible says i think it's mark 4 or so did i write it here mark chapter 4 and verse 24. let me show you god's standard it says take heed what ye hear with what measure ye meet it shall be measured to you that means hearing is also sowing when you hear it's like a farmer putting seeds and he said that if you hear you are drawing more of that that means you keep attracting more things to your life are you seeing why more tragedies continue to come to people because their minds continue to create the climate for it this is where it comes from it shall be measured to you and unto you that hear shall more be given more of what you hear more of what you hear if you hear the word of god you hear things that build you more of it will come you hear about the anointing it will bring the anointing more of it will come you hear about that's why we must be careful now i minister deliverance and all of that but i have a little problem with talking about satan and talking about demons every day and forever it is dangerous because more than the information you are trying to pass you are shaping the minds of the people to the point that they will never ever see victory again when isaiah the year that king uzziah died isaiah told us what he saw he said i saw the lord i saw the lord son of man what seest thou you must choose what you hear Parus you must choose what you see words is a battle of destiny please understand what i'm telling you it's a battle of destiny words are like drugs the only thing is that they don't enter through your mouth once they enter your spirit they can keep you poor they can keep you less anointed but when you embrace the engrafted word it is able to make you this is the place of encounter. This is the place of surrender. 
to me what you want. This is the place where my flesh gives way. Do to me what you want. This is the place where my life is changed. Do to me what you want. The disciples went into hiding because of something they heard. As soon as Jesus resurrected, he told Mary Magdalene, he said, Run, go and tell them this new information. Jesus is alive, he's risen. The tomb is empty. As soon as she went to tell them, that information gave them energy. Listen, you are dying today physically because of something that entered your ears. Something else must enter you tonight as the spirit. Something else. I am able. I am well able. I am well able. Twelve spies were sent. Ten of them came with something called an evil report. The Bible did not call it an honest report. It called it an evil. It was their perception they brought. And the Bible says, I don't care if it's not the word of God. It's an evil report. And Joshua and Caleb said, let's go up at once. He said, we are well able. They were the only two that entered the promised land. Listen. Listen. You must make it a project to frustrate Satan in your life. You must make it a project to disallow. He is at the mercy of your understanding this truth. I write to you fathers because you have known. I write to you sons because although you do not know, you have strength. You can fight and experience can come out of your battle. That when you now become fathers, you can mentor other sons. I write to you fathers, young men, because the word abides in you. So when words come, it's a battle of words and you fight in the spirit to preserve those words. Listen, he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes. But what they received made them to speak. On the day of Pentecost, fire came on their head. But the reaction was speaking. They began to speak. From that speaking, 3,000 were saved. From that speaking, the church began to advance. Please hear me. Your destiny is bigger than your today. Man of God, this level of ministry, it's only the starting point. And let me tell you this. If you can hold on to that victory, the Bible calls the fight to protect God's information the victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. Overcomes. Lift your voice and begin to blast in the spirit. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. In the name of Jesus. The victory that overcomes. Even our faith. The victory that overcomes. Even our faith. The victory that overcomes. Even our faith. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Be a speaking spirit tonight.
Prayer point number one. Hear me. Hear me. It was through the power of prayer, a physical climate changed from a dry season to a rainy season. Any climate can change when we pray. Elijah prayed dry season to become rainy season. You are going to pray that every atmosphere and every climate that ministers death, that ministers discouragement, that in the name of Jesus, both the information and the atmosphere live my life. Speak to it. Speak to your childhood. Speak to your limitations. I come in the name of the Lord, the captain of the armies of heaven. First Corinthians 14 verse 10. Read with me. One to read. There are, as it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification. That means no voice at all is just a social voice. No voice at all is just a technology voice. No Every voice is programming your destiny. Whether it is the voice of a mentor, the voice of the word of God, the voice of culture, the voice of your childhood, the voice of your family, you are going to pray. The Bible says bringing down every stronghold and every thought to the obedience of Christ. Lift your voice and tear down words and information.
Hallelujah. Listen to me. The Bible says, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed seeds and went his way. But the Bible says, every tree that has not been planted by my father, in the realm of your spirit and in the realm of your mind, you are going to uproot and tear down by faith. Lift your voice and declare, I uproot every speaking, I uproot every foundation, I uproot every perception, I uproot every communication that is not consistent with the character, every communication that is not consistent with my goal, with my destiny, with my boundaries. I call against it in the name of Jesus. Is someone praying tonight? Hallelujah. Please look up while you pray. It's a strong anointing here. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. But we need to know how we resist the devil in this kingdom. Matthew chapter 4 verse 10. Please give it to us quickly. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. Resist the devil. Matthew, help us media. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. This is how Jesus rebuked and resisted the devil. Then said Jesus to him, Get thee then, Satan, for it is written. That is the basis. It is written. Not I think, not I wish, it is written. The victory that overcomes is a victory that is written. Written. The logos. Get thee tense poverty, for it is written. Get thee tense limitation, for it is written. Lift your voice and declare, Satan away from my destiny, away from my life. It is written. Speak scripture. It is written. Yes, 
Hallelujah. Prophet Joel. Prophet Joel taught us a very deep mystery. In chapter 3, please give it to us, we are praying. Chapter 3 and verse 10, Joel. Joel 3 and verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords. In other words, it's time for the fight of faith. And your pruning forks into spares this is not just a time for harvest it's a time for warfare and then he says in that warfare let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich let the redeemed of the lord say so you are about to say so now this is strategy everything the bible says you are Everything the word of God says you are, you are about to say it now. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. I am strong. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. If someone pray, I am anointed. My business is flourishing, pray. The ministry is flourishing by the spirit. My home is flourishing by the power of the Holy Ghost. My finances is flourishing by the spirit of the Christ. I go from glory to glory. I go from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And listen to me. You are going to declare. The Lord spoke to us that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. You are going to pray and prophesy. It must be as he said. It must be as he said. Over every area of my life. Lift your voice now and begin to pray. It must be as said. Il a 
Job chapter 5, verse 19. Job chapter 5, verse 19. We we'll read 19 and 20. Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. Are we there? He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven shall no evil touch you. Verse 20. In famine. This is the first kind of trouble that comes upon men in the earth. Famine. He shall redeem thee from death. In war. He shall redeem thee from the power of the sword. 21. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. Listen, this is a mystery that one day God will grant me the grace to teach in this place. The word league is covenant. That you will be in, in a covenant with the stones of the field. And the beast of the field shall be at peace with you. Listen, he said in six troubles, yes, seven. He shall deliver you. You are about to pray these prayers. In famine, in war, the speakings and the tongues of men, Lord, arise by the Spirit. And let my life see your salvation. Let my life see your salvation. Lift your voice and pray. Are you praying? Ebarrotto, 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 Ebar
Praise the Lord. Just two or three more prayer points and we're done for the night. Listen to me. You're going to cry to God and ask the Holy Spirit to be the administrator of your atmosphere. Listen, it's a powerful prayer. He is called the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. The protector of your atmosphere that your mind will always remain at the presence Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark you are going to pray Spirit of the Lord you were sent to guide me into all truth guide me into the truth formation that will build faith in me for the days that come Lift your voice and begin. Please lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Empato sikete wisdom of God. Shalabate. Shit of the living God. Guide me to all truth. Take away the unnecessary from my life. Lead me to information. Lead me to scripture. Lead me to revelation. Lead me to understanding. That build my life. That build my destiny. Koinonia, is this your prayer? Is this your prayer tonight? Is this your prayer tonight? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Declare ye that ye might test be justified. That means your bailout, your vindication in the realm of the spirit is predicated upon your declaring. Declaring what? What is written? Listen. The word of God that is allocated for every area of your life to produce victory. You are not going to spare. You will speak. Listen. Listen. I told you that words carry energy. They carry presence. They create imagery. They connect your emotions to those images and then they make for creation. This is the technology of information. You are going to pray 
over anything in your life that must change in this season that must change you are going to enforce the word of god with power and grace i like you to lift your your voice mention the areas that must change place a demand don't let the devil speak things to your ears is it your finances? Is it your family? Is it your spiritual life? Listen to me. You can create a new effect. You can create a new atmosphere. You can create a new image. You can win. The word of God abides in you. Open your mouth and declare, declare, declare. The word of the Lord. In the glory and the power, I see miracles, signs and wonders. In the glory and the power. I'm a sign and wonder, Lord, I receive. my perception about life my perception about God my perception about my circumstances my perception about Satan do a miracle to my sight lift your voice and pray do a miracle change my perception every image every emotional connection to every image that is birthing pain that is birthing impossibilities that is allowing darkness to reign over my life change my perception koinonia pray a miracle of the seen eyes change my perception the Bible says, for we know that all things work together for good to them. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.